Hello everyone, today we have new video review and as you can see this time we are going to check fresh release from Kavazavode Prostev. Uh, that's a 170 second scale aircraft kit, as you can see it's even written here that it's new to model so it's even more interesting, which copies MiG-21 UM, famous Mongol B modification of MiG-21, as you can see that's a two-seater, um, in small scale it should be quite an interesting build for any modeler in my opinion. So as you can see we have this nice box art on the front, uh, two aircraft flying in the sky and here you can see comparison with my hand it's not that big box but still quite surprising size for one so a second scale here we have safety devices and on the rear side we have camouflage options so here we have four marking options one two three four this one comes from um, air plana airfield in 1990s this one is from German Air Force 1990s. This one is a aircraft which was sold to USA in 1994, but it was before in Czechoslovak Air Force in 1974. And this one was serving in Polish Air Force in 19 mm, in 90s, I suppose, because here no year is written, but this aircraft. Uh, started to serve in aircraft forces during 70s and 90s. So this is a side opening box, let's open it and see what is hidden inside. So as you can see there is plenty of space inside, so no worries about possible issues with parts. All sprues and even assembly manual are packed into the same plastic bag. So just give me a second to open them and we will take a closer look at what is included here. Okay, so first we have transparent sprue which is packed into the separate plastic bag and here we have all necessary canopy parts which will let you build open or closed canopy. So as you can see for closed canopy we have separate part, for open canopy we have three pieces combo and these parts look a bit muted. Um, I will bring them closer so that you can see what I'm talking about. So here you can see it. I would rather give a small, um, let's say, bit of sanding and also apply clear gloss lacquer in order to get a bit more shiny finish because as you can see now it's more matte finish, I would say. I'm not sure why we have such effect, but it is present and that's why um, there are several ways how to counter it. Next we have First grey plastic sprue, let's zoom out a bit and focus the camera. So here you can see it, two fuselage halves. We we'll know that the right one is molded together with stable segment and rudder. Um, I guess it will serve as a guiding element on this too. And also here we have the fuel tank, missiles, some cockpit parts, even two dashboards are here, landing gear wheels, two separate cockpit bases. Also here we have the frontal uh, wheel wells part which is molded as a one piece part and fuselage halves they have the uh, nice detailing I will show it in a second just give me a moment okay so now you should be able to see it we have nice recessed panel lines and riveting but again these are not that deep so be careful with paint and primer layers it will be possible to lose them really fast and then you have to figure out somehow how to uh, rescribe everything back in place. And the same way of detailing is present here on the other Fizovic half. You should be able to see it on the light. And inside we have minor cockpit detailing, here you can see it. The same applies to this cockpit section. I don't see any guiding elements, only the tail section will serve you as an alignment helper, let's say, during assembly. Note that there are no mm, position pins even in the fuel tanks, so it will be quite funny to assemble those parts. Winding gear wheels look okay, I would say. Just be sure to carefully paint them, because as you can see they are molded together with 
uh, tires. Here you can see dashboards. I would rather replace them with P parts because as you can see, uh, they're not that detailed, I would say, even though we have promoted dials. And this one looks a bit messy in my opinion. And I think it's worth upgrading to PE parts and having a better appearance. And here you can take a look at cockpit bases. Those look okay. Oh, let's not forget that this is a 170 second scale. That's why some modellers might just say it's fine for such small size, for such small dimensions. And they will just do them. Uh, they will use the standard elements. Next we have second and the last grey plastic sprue and here the most surprising thing for me is that we have two pairs of wings here and there. Both are molded as one piece part so you won't have to deal with any separate house for uh, those uh, parts of the aircraft. Both have um, both types have recess panel lines and riveting all over them. Here we have by the way the tail wings. Um, here we have landing gear wheels. Various external elements are also present here. For example, here you can see main wheel wells. And what is else interesting, um, in my opinion, is that we have separate air brakes and separate nose cone, which is molded as a one piece part. So basically you won't have to deal with seams, at least in this visible area. And now let's focus on the swing parts so that you can see them in detail. So here you can see them. Recess panel lines and riveting are present. Again, they're not that deep and I would rather be careful with paint and primers, but they look quite nice. Here you can see also the tail wings and some other external elements. Here we have also pitot tube which is molded as one piece part. It might be tricky to separate. Maybe some modellers will even replace it with metal. Counterpart, here you can see another type of the wing. Note that both types, they have pre-molded ailerons and flaps, so you won't be able to drop them on your aircraft. Let's flip it over. Here you can see what we have inside. Main wheel wells are pre-molded here and here. But as you remember, we also have separate sections, which are molded like this. And they also look okay, I would say. By the way, you can see also this one piece nose cone, which looks good. And what else I wanted to show is this nose landing gear leg with two attachment points. It should be easy to separate it and molding quality seems to be fine with this one. I don't see any possible flash or other molding damage. Next we have the decals sheet. This one is not that big but it features all necessary symbols. Let's zoom out a bit and now we just focus the camera so that you can see how the decals sheet. So first of all we have full range of stencils included here which is quite surprising in 170 second scale. Next we have all necessary symbols for four marking options as you remember. And also here we have decals for the seat belts, for dashboards. So you might use original dashboards because they will be covered with those decals and it will influence the final appearance of those parts. And printing quality seems to be fine. I don't see any possible problems with those. I hope application will be easy as well. In total there are 41 stencils um, decals. So it will be quite fun to apply all of them on 172nd scale kit. Next we have assembly manual. This one is the last and quite useful element of the kit. Um, as you can see on the first page we have short history note in Czech and English, also some technical specifications and also here we have the legend for the signs used in assembly manual. Next we have parts map. Note that some parts won't be used so be careful. And assembly starts with cockpit obviously, we assemble the cockpit base and then we glue together pilot seats. As you can see, and as I said before, those cockpit bases will be separate and then they will be inserted into the fuselage and you will be using the... Um, there is no mention of the nose weight surprisingly, but I would rather 
I recommend to use nose weight so that you won't get the tail sitter. Note that here we also have the special alignment guide for the wings and you have to modify wings a bit, so keep it in mind. Here we have installation of the landing gear wheels, uh, rockets and fuel tanks. And then we have also armament diagram and stenciling guide. Then we have first marking guide for the uh, marking option which was serving in Plana Air Base. Next one is from Polish Air Force. This one is from East, East German Air Force. And this one is uh, um, from 47th Recon Air Regiment in Czechoslovak Air Force. So, as you remember, four marking options. Paint numbers are given in Humbro and the Gamma designations, but it won't be difficult to convert them into the one which you are using the most. So, that's all for this video review. We have quite interesting copy of the twin-seater um, aircraft uh, in 172nd scale. I think it will be easy to assemble for those who have some experience behind their backs and of course it will be interesting for all fans of the Soviet jet aircraft. And of course I will be happy to hear your opinion about this kit, write it here in the comment section below. If you like this video press the like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel and I will see you in the next video review as usual, bye!